were, were you there when he was executed? Yes. Can you describe the scene? Well, when I was there, I was I had the rank of captain, and there was a phone call who arrived at Igueras, and they asked for the highest ranking officer. Uh, I was the highest ranking officer at the time. There were only other two lieutenants in the area, and I received the order by telephone to execute him. The order came a, a simple code that we had created that was 500 Che Guevara, 600 kill, 700 alive. And it came very clear, which I asked to be repeated, 500, 600. So when Colonel Centeno came from the operational area before he left, I called him aside and said, there are order from your high command to eliminate the prisoner. Now the order from my government is try to keep him alive. So he said, Felix, we are working empirically here. We owe you a lot of but this is order from my president, my commander in chief. I would be fired if I don't comply with him. He looked at his watch and said, you have until 2 o'clock to interrogate him. And you can execute him any way you want because we know how much harm he has done to your country. I want your word of honor that you at 2 o'clock in the afternoon will bring me back the dead body of Shea. And I answered, my coronel tried to make them change their mind. It's important for us uh, to interrogate him, and we have equipment to bring him out of the country. But if you don't give me a counter order, I will give you my word of honor that I will bring you back, his dead body. So we embraced, and he left. So around uh, 12, 30 in the afternoon, the school teacher came to where I was. And he, she came with a little radio in her hand. He said, mi capitán, mi capitán, when are you going to kill him? I said, lady, why do you say that? He said, well, we saw you getting a picture with him outside there. And look, she showed me a radio, a portable radio. He said, the radio's already given the news that he died from combat wounds. So at that point in time, I thought it was no point in waiting anymore. They already, the decision had been made. And so I came into the room, and I stood in front of him. I said, commander, I'm sorry, I tried my best. He turned white like a piece of paper, and he said, it's better this way. I should have never been captured alive. Then he pulled out the pipe that he had. He said, I'd like to give this pipe to a soldier who treated me well. So at that point in time, Sergeant Terran, who was the one executing everybody, came into the room. Yo quiero la pipa, mi capitán. I want the pipe. Y él dijo, no, a ti no te la doy. I won't give it to you. So I said, Commander, will you give it to me? He thought for a couple of seconds. He said, si, a ti si te la doy. Yes, I will give it to you. He gave me the pipe. I put it here. Then I said, if you want, I can't. Uh, I, can I send you a message for your family? And then kind of, I will say, uh, uh, with this day, he said, well, if you can tell Fidel that he will soon see a triumphant revolution in America, which I understand, like, you abandon me, but this is going to be successful anyway. And then he changed the expression and said, then you tell my wife to remarry and try to be happy. And that's all he said. He came to where I was. He shook my hand. He embraced, and I embraced him. And then he stood in attention in the back, thinking I was going to be the one doing the shooting. So I left the room. There was already full of soldiers outside. And I approached Sergeant Terran, who was in charge of uh, executing everybody there. And I said, Sergeant, there are orders from your command to eliminate the prisoner. Don't shoot from here up. Shoot from here down, because he's supposed to die from combat wounds. See me, Capitan. See me, Capitan. So I left. I went to an advance post to take note. It was 1 o'clock in the afternoon, Bolivian time. And around 1 thing, uh, 1.20, I heard the burst. And that time, I took note that was when he was executed. So you didn't actually witness the? Uh, no. How did they tell you that? Did he say anything? His last words? What were his last words? There is only rumor of what he said. Uh, when I was there, they, they, I heard the rumor from some of the soldiers uh, that when Terran came into the room, he said, Che, I come to talk to you. Uh, he said, no, you, I know you're going to kill me. Uh, he, the guy said, no, no, you, you are more worse to us alive than dead. And that's exactly what he said when he was captured. When he faced the Bolivian soldier on, on, the, uh, on the 8th of October, uh, he said, don't shoot, I am Che, I am more alive you than dead, than dead, more worse to you alive than dead. And they say, no, I know you're going to kill me, but you're going to kill a man. That's what I understand. And then he opened fire, and check went like this, because you can see there is a bullet through here. It was a normal reaction trying to protect yourself when, you know, mm -hmm. and, uh, and that's when, when he died. Uh, I know you've been asked this a thousand times, but I'm going to ask you too. Uh, it, it, the, um, in Cuba, when they would arrest somebody before execute them, mm -hmm. they wouldn't they would humiliate them, spend hours cursing at them, even beating them up, and, and uh, just um, just trying to do everything possible to ruin their lives, even though they're about to be executed. Um, did at any point you feel at that time to doing the same to him? No. The only thing that I thought at the beginning was, before I met him and talked to him, was that he, if he was going to be executed beyond any doubt by order of the Bolivian, that maybe he should die in front of a firing squad, exactly the same way that he had killed so many Cubans. But then when I saw him, I honestly felt sorry for, for an individual the way he looked at. I mean, it, it was 
uh, to see a man that I have seen before in front of Mao, all of that, you know, so arrogant. And now you see this man that looks like a beggar. Uh, as a human being, you feel sorry for him. Well, why didn't you stay to witness the execution? Hmm? Why didn't you stay to witness the execution? I didn't feel, uh, you know, that to me, it, it was probably one of the hardest times of my life to have to give that, pass that order, even though it wasn't mine. Because uh, I, I don't feel that, uh, you know, when you already have a prisoner, uh, you know, to kill him without a trial or anything. But that was ordered from the high Bolivian command. I knew how much harm he had already done in Bolivia, how many soldiers had been killed. And that was the Bolivian call, not ours, even though we did try to save his life. Uh, how, what were your instructions uh, as to what you should do with the body? Uh, and what did happen? No, we had no instruction as far as that was concerned. Uh, it was not our control. Uh, well, from there, we flew the body to Valle Grande, and that evening I had a meeting with General um, Obando Candia, Alfredo Obando Candia, the commander of the armed forces in general. At one point in time, he was looking at one of the colonels and said, if Fidel Castro denies this is Che Guevara, we need tangible proof of it. And he told him, cut his head and put it in formaldehyde. At that point, told him, in general, you cannot do that. He said, why not? He said, you are the head of a state. Suppose Fidel Castro denies this is uh, Che Guevara. You cannot present the head of a human being as proof. Say, well, what do you suggest? Well, mi general, if you, if you want a tangible proof of it, uh, cut one finger. Uh, we have the fingerprint from the Argentinian federal police, and it can be checked. So he looked at me, he moved his head, and said, close both hands and put it in for Malahai. And that's exactly what they did. After the press left at uh, 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning, then they took the, the, the doctor in there, they cut both hands, they put it in for Malahai. And then they took the body to the wrong way, and they buried it there, with, along with two other Cubans. So you, you think that, uh, who were the two other Cubans? Who were the two other Cubans? One was uh, Captain Pantoja, Oslo Pantoja, another Cuban captain, we I forgot his name. Uh, the, um, but you had... See, when, when I came to the room where he was, he was tied down in the floor. And in front of him was the dead body of two Cubans. One of them was Oslo Pantoja, Captain Pantoja, who was the head of training for foreigners in Cuba. And there was another Cuban captain there. Uh, but that, that the uh, press had already been there to take those uh, well-known photographs and video of him on the, on, on the bed. So what more proof do people need? I guess that they just really... Well, you know, when you look at his face in there, uh, a lot of people say, yeah, he resembled him, but it wasn't him. Yeah. Uh, because it's not the same when you're alive and you are dead. So they felt, you know, that Fidel might deny it and he might not be proving of those, you know, pictures and everything. So he wanted tangible proof of it. I saw a documentary one time, and they used the, you know, that video of him dead there, and they kind of tried to portray him as Christ-like. What was your reaction when you saw that, of this man who executed so many people, that somebody would try to uh, turn that image, which was supposed to be for proof, into, in, into that? And, and it seems kind of strange that somebody who's communist would try to say that being Christ-like is, is a benefit, being that supposedly they don't believe in God. So, what was your reaction? No, I, I saw that, and you know, later on, and later on, when I was able to, you know, to look at news and everything, because from there, uh, we really moved to uh, even we stayed in Panama for a couple of weeks for for cooling period. Uh, so later on, we saw, you know, some of those with the year, we saw all of that uh, portray of him like like a martyr. Uh, for example, the the famous picture uh, that Corda took that is all over the world, and um, a lot of people don't even know really how cruel this man was. Uh, and a lot of people don't even know who they have in their T-shirt. For example, in Paris, uh, the Colonel Dariel Alcon Ramirez, who was in Bolivia with him and defected, told one day uh, to his wife, to a young Parisian who had this picture of Che, who was he? And the young Parisian looked at his T-shirt and said, I think he's a rock finger. He had no idea who he had bought. I mean, he looked at the picture in, in, in a store, he liked it, and he bought it. He had no idea who he was. And what I told a lot of people, you know, to learn more about what really Che Guevara was, I had one experience about 20 years ago of a lady who came to me. I was in a funeral home for some brigade member who had died, and she was for another reason in there, and she learned that I had participated in, in the capture of Che Guevara. So she came, she wanted to talk to me, and she told me that her son was executed by Che when he was 17 in 1960 or 59. And, I say, and then she told me how it happened. Her son had been writing things against the regime in walls. He was captured and he was ordered to be executed on Friday. It was a Monday. So she wanted to see Shed to save his, his life. And when she arrived, he actually ac accepted to talk to her. And she asked, okay, what's your son's name? So me look, she's very young. Uh, he will not do it again. And she gave him his name. 
when it's going to be executed, she said on, on, on Friday. He called an assistant. She thought that she had saved his life. And he told the assistant, get so-and-so and execute him now so the lady here doesn't have to wait until Friday. That was his answer. And that, I understand, have been done with a lot of other Cuban mothers. I've heard similar stories mm. like that, too. He was very uh, cruel and almost seemed to enjoy uh, his uh, ability to, you know, wave the wand and, and like, like yeah. give the thumbs down. One of his traits was he wanted to imply uh, miedo, fear, more than anything else. And that was, that was what the... Dariel Alarcón Ramirez had told me, they fear him more than anything else. It was the respect, it was fear. I think he wanted to project that. And in the Sierra Maestra, he uh, executed a, a young guerrilla because he stole a can of, of, of condensed milk. I mean, that's ridiculous. But that implements fear among the people you are with. I mean, for a little thing like that, he will kill you. So instead of respect, they fear him more than anything else.